This series has everything you could expect. It features a giant robot fighting against a giant monster, set in a world with a rich history. Plus, it includes Idris Elba delivering an extremely heroic speech. In early March, Netflix released the first season of the Pacific Rim series, The Black, adding to the timeline of this world. Today, we will delve into all the details of the Pacific Rim timeline. Warning, this article contains spoilers for all the movies in the series. It all began 250 million years ago, when an alien species known as the Precursors began to invade Earth during the dinosaur era. They resided in a place called the Antiverse, a water-covered space where they created giant kaiju creatures and used them as weapons to conquer different parts of the planet. However, the Precursors were unable to adapt to the Earth's harsh environment at that time. Millions of years passed, and as humans gradually polluted the Earth, they unknowingly created the perfect conditions for the Precursors to launch their invasion. On August 10, 2013, the Precursors opened a portal in the Pacific Ocean, known as the Breach, and unleashed their first kaiju, named Trespasser, to wreak havoc on humanity. The initial attack occurred in San Francisco. Despite causing destruction in several cities, Trespasser was eventually defeated by the military, who used nuclear bombs to destroy the creature. Six months later, China launched a second invasion, unleashing the Kaiju Handun to attack Manila, Philippines. However, the monster was ultimately destroyed by a nuclear bomb. While the attack successfully eliminated the threat, it resulted in severe nuclear pollution that greatly impacted the land. Three days later, the Kaiju Alert System was formed to warn of the appearance of Kaiju and protect the people. Four months later, another monster was brought in to attack the coastal city of Cabo San Lucas. Despite the army's attempts to lure the monster out of the city, they were ultimately forced to use nuclear weapons to shoot it down, resulting in half of the city becoming uninhabitable. Three months after the initial incident, a kaiju named Scissor attacked the city of Sydney. The military quickly intervened and transported the monster to an isolated location. In order to protect the city's inhabitants, they gave the civilians one hour to evacuate to a safe area before deploying nuclear weapons to eliminate the threat. Less than two weeks after the initial incident, the threat of kaijus was recognized and a seminar was held in Seoul, South Korea. When the author of Stalker asked for proposals to combat the kaiju danger, scientist Jasper Schoenfeld suggested an idea inspired by his son's toy robots, creating giant Jaeger machines. This idea was later approved by the United Nations. Between September and November 2014, the United Nations established the Pacific Defense Organization, PPDC, with the goal of countering the kaijus. On November 9, 2014, the Jaeger Project was officially launched and funded by the PPDC and the United Nations. To accomplish this, Schoenfeld had to locate his former colleague, Lycapt, who had extensive knowledge of neural connections. Initially, the two only managed to create a large robot twice the size of a normal person. However, due to lack of concrete results, funding for the project was dwindling. Fortunately, the Stryker Foundation stepped in to test the neural link and provide additional funding for continued development. A month later, the PPDC approved the trial of using the Jaegers on Kodiak Military Island. However, the tests revealed that the brains of some Jaegers were not functioning properly. The pilot was not physically capable of piloting a Jaeger. During a test flight, Sergeant Sergio, a volunteer for the Jaeger project, was in control of the brawler Yukon moments before it crashed. Concerned for Sergio's safety, Flight Captain Lycab made the decision to join the crew in order to help stabilize the aircraft. This led to the development of a two-seater system that would evenly distribute the weight of piloting the Jaegers between the two pilots. After a month of intense training, Lycab and Sergeant Sergio became the first pair of pilots to successfully pilot the brawler Yukon in a fight against a kaiju. Together, they were able to defeat the monstrous creature in an attack on Vancouver, Canada. On April 23, 2015, a kaiju named Karloff emerged in Vancouver, just weeks before the Jaegers were officially deployed. The brawler Yukon arrived just in time and was able to take down the kaiju with one powerful blow. The army then arrived on the scene to provide assistance and rescue the Jaegers. To study the kaiju and gain a deeper understanding of them, a control station in Hong Kong was established and numerous Jaegers from different countries were deployed at the end of 2012. These included Tacit Ronin from Japan, Romeo Blue from the US, Horizon Brave from China, and another Jaeger from Japan called the Coyote Tango, which was operated by Steger. On May 15, 2016, an attack occurred in Tokyo, Japan, by the Kaiju Anibaba, a giant crab-like creature. Kayo D. Tango, controlled by a stalker commander, fought against the monster in order to rescue Mako. The stalker later took in Mako as a pet and she grew up to become a member of the PPDC. 
A month later, another kaiju, Etok, appeared in Tokyo. Tacit Brony was deployed from the Tokyo Control Station to battle Etok. Unfortunately, Etak was able to break through the core of Tacit Brony, causing the Jaeger to sustain severe damage. Kayo D. Tango then arrived to assist in the fight, but was unable to defeat Etak. Fortunately, Tacit Brony eventually managed to defeat the Kaiju and save the city. On July 5, 2016, a massive Kaiju known as Ragnarok emerged at the port of Tokyo. The Victory Alpha was deployed to combat the monster, but unfortunately, it was unable to defeat it. Tarsus Ronin then appeared and successfully defeated Ragnarok. However, during the battle with its hack, the anti-ship class was damaged, resulting in the death of the two pilots on board. On July 10, 2017, Gypsy Danger, the main robot in the two Pacific Rim movies, was completed on Kodiak Military Island and taken to the Anchorage Control Station in Alaska for military use. Gypsy was piloted by two individuals, Yancey and Raleigh Beckett. In the winter of 2020, Gypsy Danger was deployed to the sea to destroy the Kaiju knife head and also to save a fishing boat caught in the battle. Unfortunately, Gypsy sustained severe damage from the Kaiju and Yangshi, a member of the crew, lost his life. With determination, Raleigh took on the task of defeating the Kaiju and bringing Gypsy to safety. Devastated by the loss of his brother, he made the decision to become a construction worker in the fight against the Kaiju. Five years later, in 2025, the BBDC funded the construction of an anti-kaiju wall with the hope of protecting humans from the monstrous creatures. The construction project was necessary as the number of Jaegers destroyed by the kaiju had reached an unsustainable level, leaving only the Hong Kong control station operational. However, the wall was not impenetrable as a kaiju easily destroyed it in Sydney. Stacker, the leader of the Jaeger program, approached Raleigh with a plan to use nuclear bombs to destroy the kaiju and protect the wall. In order to put an end to the never-ending battle against Kaiju, Raleigh's mission was to destroy the Space Gate. Upon his arrival, he encountered Marco, now the project manager of the Gypsy. All of the latest machines were assembled at the Hong Kong station, including China's Crimson Typhoon, Russia's Chernal Alpha, and Australia's Striker Eureka, controlled by two subordinates, Kirk and Chuck Hansen. Despite Striker's opposition, Raleigh chose Marco as his ally. However, during his first time on the Gypsy, Raleigh was overwhelmed by memories of his brother. Marco also recalled the traumatic memory of escaping from Anubaba after his family was killed, causing the gypsy to malfunction. It was later revealed that Stryker had been exposed to radiation, which was slowly killing him. Dr. Newton then proposed a collaboration with the strength of kaiju in order to gain a better understanding of this species. Through their research, they discovered that kaiju was a biological weapon created by the precursors in the antiverse. Additionally, Newton was granted permission to travel to Earth in order to identify the source of Hannibal Chow's black market, which sold kaiju parts. He needed to inquire about purchasing a new kaiju brain for further research. However, as the East is a two-way road, the kaiju were also able to extract information from Newton, including how he acquired the parts. Shortly after, two kaiju, Otachi and Leatherback, launched a surprise attack on Newton. All the Jaegers, except Gypsy, were deployed to defend against the attack, but Leatherback's electromagnetic gun rendered them ineffective. Fortunately, due to Gypsy Danger's nuclear power source, it was still operable under the control of Riley and Marco. Working together, they successfully destroyed both kaiju, providing the audience with the most thrilling and visually stunning action scenes in cinematic history. After the battle, the investigation team discovered that Otachi was pregnant. The baby Otachi crawled out of its mother's womb and ate Hannibal's flesh, but died from a neck injury. This time, Newt and Herman were in the same situation with Otachi's offspring. In order to pass through the gate, one must possess kaiju DNA. This is why many previous attempts to bomb the space gate have provided a source of supply. After Herc Hansen sustained injuries from the battle with Leatherback, Chuck and Stryker united to join Gypsy in destroying the space gate located beneath the Pacific Ocean. Upon their arrival, they were met with three kaiju blocking their path to the gate. Among them was the first level five kaiju, Slatern. In the intense battle, Gypsy utilized a sword to defeat one of the kaiju, while Stryker selflessly sacrificed himself to create a path for Gypsy to reach the gate. Despite the explosion, Slatern survived but was ultimately defeated by Gypsy, whose body was then used to gain access to the Antiverse. With teamwork and determination, the two successfully detonated a nuclear missile, destroying the space gate. Fortunately, Raleigh and Marco managed to escape unharmed. Thus concludes part one. In the year 2035, a decade after the successful demolition of the space gate, the economy had gradually recovered and the Jaeger project was relaunched. Jake, the son of Stacker, made a living by selling parts from abandoned Jaegers. In a movie, Jake met Amara, a genius girl who had successfully created a Jaeger named Scrapper, driven by a man named Scrapper.
Jake and Amara were both sent to prison after attempting to use Scrapper to escape. However, Amara came up with a solution for their escape by becoming members of the PPDC in China. Amara joined as a student, while Jake became a trainer for the new generation of pilots. At the control station, several Jaegers were being mobilized, including Titan Redeemer, Bracer Phoenix, Saber Athena, and Gypsy Avenger, the new and improved version of Gypsy Danger. The CEO of Xiao Technology, Li Wen, with the support of Dr. Newton, was leading the project. With the ambition of using unmanned Jaeger technology to replace pilots, Gypsy was taken to the area under the control of Jake and Lambert during a protest. However, the fight was interrupted by the appearance of Obsidian Fury, an unmanned Jaeger, that launched a surprise attack. In the midst of the chaos, Marco's plane exploded, tragically killing him. Obsidian Fury, realizing it was outnumbered, quickly retreated. Before his death, Marco managed to leave a message that led the group to an island in Siberia. On the island, Gypsy engaged in a fierce battle with Obsidian Fury, only to discover that the Jaeger was being controlled by an artificial kaiju. It was revealed that for the past 10 years, Newton had been under the control of the Precursors due to his extensive exposure to Kaiju Brain. In secret, Newt had created Kaiju implants and installed them into the unmanned Jaeger, using it to open a space gate. Their ultimate goal was to unleash a powerful Kaiju. However, during the battle, the Kaiju's blood had an unexpected reaction, leading to a shocking revelation. The rare mineral found here has the potential to cause a global chemical explosion, making it easier for the Precursor to invade the planet. The entire Jaeger team flew to Japan to prevent a potential kaiju flood, which initially seemed like the more imminent threat. Newton has deployed small robots to combine the three kaiju into one mega kaiju. Athena, Titan, and Bracer were all completely destroyed by the kaiju, and Lambert sustained serious injuries in the battle, resulting in his replacement by Amara. Liwen used remote-controlled technology on Scrapper to attach missiles and enable Gypsy to reach the mega kaiju. The robot was able to shoot down from the sky, plunging into the monster and preventing a disaster. Liwen also utilized Scrapper to rescue Jack and Amara. Lambert was eventually captured by Newton and brought back to the base. And finally, we have Pacific Rim, The Black. This film takes place after the events of Uprising in Australia. It follows the story of brothers Taylor and Haley Travis, who were abandoned by their parents and left to fend for themselves. The events in the film occur approximately five years after this initial abandonment. One day, Haley accidentally stumbles upon the Atlas Destroyer. Unfortunately, the sound of the robot's activation attracts the attention of a level four kaiju named Copperhead. The kaiju proceeds to destroy the entire community where Haley and Taylor were living. Despite their attempts to control the Atlas Destroyer, the brothers are unable to defeat Copperhead and tragically lose their lives in the process. In their search for fuel for the robot, they come across a kaiju-like Jaeger and discover a mysterious boy trapped in the old PPDC base. After rescuing the boy, the trio meets a kaiju-like soldier, Mei, who proves to be a brave and skilled female soldier. Mei and her teammates take Kappa to their base, where they make a shocking discovery. A group of people is exchanging kaiju in order to obtain Jaeger's ancient relics. The base's leader, Shane, uses a drift device on a Jaeger to extract all of Taylor's memories, allowing him to control the powerful Atlas Destroyer. Despite their efforts, the activation of Atlas continues to pull Copperhead towards it. This time, it is Taylor and May who are in control of the giant machine. They manage to defeat Copperhead, but in the process, they lose their Jaeger and the source of their weapon. This infuriates Shane, who kicks Taylor, Haley, and the young girl out of the base. In addition, Gat Donmat sends his men to pursue them for revenge. However, something very strange happens. The boy who had accompanied Taylor and Haley miraculously survives after being shot by one of Gat Donmat's men. When May and Taylor return to the base to retrieve the Atlas Destroyer, they find that Haley and the boy have been captured by Shane. While May was busy shaking Shane, Joel, a skilled engineer in the base, suggested that Taylor could operate the Geiger alone if he accessed Herc Hansen's mental data. Why Herc? It was simple, because in the past, Herc had been one of the rare individuals who could successfully run the Geiger alone. The other two were Stacker Pentecost and Raleigh. The plan proved to be a success as May and Haley took control of Atlas Destroyer from Taylor. However, their victory was short-lived as Joel was mercilessly killed by Shane. Determined to avenge her colleague's death, May turned back and confronted Shane. Meanwhile, Taylor and Haley were unsure of what to do next when suddenly, a space gate appeared beneath their feet. In a split-second decision, they jumped into it, hoping to retrieve the machine and escape the clutches of the mysterious child. Using the Geiger counter, they followed the signs to a graveyard where dozens of Geiger and Kaiju corpses from many years ago were laid to rest. As they explored the area, they were suddenly attacked by a third-class Kaiju named Acid Quill. However, before things could escalate, they were unexpectedly rescued by a biological machine known as Apex. 
This advanced machine was a reproduction of both a machine and a kaiju body, similar to the one seen in Pacific Rim Uprising. Just as Apex was about to destroy Atlas Destroyer, the white-haired boy intervened and stopped it. With its ability to connect with the mind, Apex recognized Taylor and Haley as allies and provided them with a new hand. Together, the three of them followed a signal back to the city, where they were reunited with May. In the city, Taylor and Haley discovered their parents' old Geiger and learned the truth about their deaths. However, their reunion was cut short as the Kaiju Copperhead continued to appear and attack Atlas Destroyer. In the midst of the most tragic moment, the strange boy transformed into a giant Kaiju to confront Copperhead and protect Haley. After a series of twists and turns, they were finally able to defeat the monster. In the end, a group of hunters watched in awe as the Kaiju Boy was hailed as the savior of their city. In January of this year, director Guillermo del Toro, known for his work on Pacific Rim, stated on his personal Twitter account that he had no intention of reshooting the film. As for director Stephen T. Knight's plans for a sequel, he previously mentioned the idea of having the end of the third installment mark the intersection between the two monster universes of Pacific Rim and MonsterVerse. However, due to the unexpected performance of Uprising, this plan has not yet been put into action. In the meantime, fans can anticipate the release of Pacific Rim The Blackjack on Netflix in either 2022 or 2023. Thank you for watching this video, and we look forward to seeing you in our future videos. I am looking at you, kid. Look at me. I love you more than I've ever loved anyone before.